Good day everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about the different non-probability sampling techniques. But before anything else, let's have a short recap regarding the difference between population and sample. When we say population, this refers to a larger pool of potential participants in a research study. Pretty much this refers to the group of people who have the possibility to become part of the research itself. Whereas sample refers to the participants which are obtained from the larger population. It is also worth noting that the sample is considered as a representative thus it represents the larger population. Now at this point we're going to answer the question what are the different kinds of sampling? It is worth noting that sampling can be classified into two types. First, we have probability sampling and the other is non-probability sampling. In probability sampling, each member of the population has equal chances of being selected as a participant in the study. When we say that each member has equal chances, this means that the selection is done randomly. As such, everyone has equal opportunities to become selected. Whereas in non-probability sampling, it involves purposely choosing the participants according to some identified variables. As such, there is no random selection depending on the kind of technique that is going to be used. To know more about probability sampling, you may click here to watch the video. Now at this point, we're going to learn some of the non-probability sampling techniques. First, we have convenient sampling, coda sampling, purposive sampling, snowball sampling, modal instance sampling, and expert sampling. But first, let's answer this question. When do we use non-probability sampling? Since non-probability sampling does not involve random selection of research participants, a researcher may opt to use this technique on these instances. First, when conducting qualitative research, pilot studies, or exploratory research. Next, to indicate if a particular trait or characteristic exists in a particular population. And lastly, when results generated are not intended to be generalized to the entire population, meaning the results are only specific in that particular group of people. Now let's go back to the different types of non-probability sampling techniques, starting with convenient sampling. Convenient sampling is also known as accidental or incidental sampling. In convenient sampling, Selected participants are those who are available at the moment during the conduct of the research. However, it is worth noting that in convenient sampling, the participants selected are still based on identified characteristics. With this in mind, let's consider this example wherein we have a study that aims to determine the feedback of mall goers about the changes in the mall policies. From this example, we're able to identify that the participants are the different mall goers. As such, the researcher would then conduct the research inside the mall. The mall would be considered as the research setting. Once inside the mall, the researcher would then be able to identify different people who could become part of the study as participants. Now this brings about the question, why is this considered as non-probability sampling? This is non-probability sampling because those inside the mall are only considered to become part of the study whereas those who are outside would not have the same opportunity to become part of the research itself. Next, we have snowball sampling. Snowball sampling makes use of the participants' knowledge of other potential participants. As such, they are the ones to recruit or endorse other people to become participants in the same study. It is also worth noting that snowball sampling is useful whenever we are looking for hard-to-find participants. With this in mind, let's consider this example wherein we have a study that aims to identify the role of intrinsic motivation to the student's performance in study groups. From this example, we're able to identify that our participants are students who are members of study groups. As such, the researcher would then select students who are part of study groups. Once the data has been gathered from them, they would then be asked to interview or recommend other students who are also members of study groups to become part of the research. At this point, we now proceed to purposive sampling. 
In purposive sampling, participants are selected based on their knowledge about the topic. Also, the participants are chosen based on the purpose of the study. It is worth noting that purposive sampling is also known as judgmental sampling. With this in mind, let's consider this example wherein we have a study that aims to determine the lived experience of teenagers diagnosed with diabetes towards maintaining a healthy lifestyle. Based on this particular example, we're able to identify that the participants are teenagers who are diagnosed with diabetes. As such, the researcher would then select from a group of people those who are teenagers who are diagnosed with diabetes. From there, the researcher would then interact with them in order to gather the needed data. Now at this point, we're going to answer another question. What is the purpose of using purposive sampling? Since purposive sampling is the selection of participants based on the objective or purpose of the study, as well as their knowledge about the topic, this helps the researcher to identify the individuals who are most fitting to take part of the study. However, it is also the researcher's responsibility to ensure that the participants involved or selected meet the actual requirements or characteristics which are needed in the study. Now let's talk about expert sampling. Expert sampling is a variety of purposive sampling. This means that in expert sampling, the participants selected are those who are fully knowledgeable about the topic of the study. Hence, we have the term experts. These are people who are actually knowledgeable in terms of the topic, those who have experience and those who really know what they're talking about with regard to the topic being discussed. As such, let's consider this example. We have a study that aims to get expert statements towards the importance of regular vaccinations. From this example, we're able to identify that the participants are of course those who are experts. This leads us to the question, who are the experts who are able to give information about the importance of regular vaccinations? Of course, these are people who are in the medical field. As such, the researcher would then involve participants who are knowledgeable in terms of the medical field. These are the experts who are well knowledgeable regarding the topic focused in on the study. Now let's focus on coda sampling. Coda sampling is somewhat similar to stratified sampling in a way that the samples are selected from homogeneously divided strata. It is worth noting that the coda sampling is conducted in order to have equal representation of each particular strata. With this in mind, let's consider this example of a particular study that is conducted in order to determine the perceptions of senior high school students towards online learning methods. From this example, we're able to identify that the participants are senior high school students. As such, the researcher will have to select participants from the different strands offered by the senior high school department, namely science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, which is 50% of the overall population, humanities and social science, which is 20% of the overall senior high school population, and accountancy, business, and management, which comprises 30% of the overall senior high school population. From there, the researcher would then compute how many members will be taken from each particular strand. Say for example, we need 25 students for this particular study. We then compute 25 students based on the percentage of each particular strand. So for STEM, we have 13 students. For UMS, we have 5 students. And for ABM, we have 7 students, which would total to 25 students in accordance with what is needed. Now you might be thinking, why do we need to have computation for the sample? In coda sampling, it is necessary to ensure that each member of the population is properly represented. As such, computing the sample is done based on the percentage represented by each member of the population. Depending on the percentage, the number of the sample or the participants would then be identified. At this point, let's talk about the modal instance sampling. The modal instance sampling involves selection of the most typical members to become part of the sample. When we say typical, this refers to the most common occurrence of the needed characteristics. 
In modal instance sampling, the sample is selected based on identified characteristics of participants in the research context. As such, let's consider this example of a study that aims to determine the buying preferences of the typical teenagers. From this example, we're able to identify that the participants would be the typical teenagers. However, that leaves us with the question, what are the characteristics of a typical teenager? Say for example that the characteristics of a typical teenager would be that they exhibit a desire to be independent, they tend to spend most of the time online, they become more active when around friends, and they are able to follow the latest trends in fashion. Once these characteristics are then established, a researcher would then select from a group of teenagers who could become a part of the actual study. The researcher would then assess who among the teenagers exhibit most, if not all of the characteristics that are needed in order to become part of the study. After this, the researcher would then identify who among the teenagers would actually become part of the study itself. In a nutshell, Non-probability sampling, much like probability sampling, involves the selection of participants in a study. Furthermore, in non-probability sampling, the members of the population do not have equal opportunities to be selected. It is worth noting that the selection of participants depend on certain characteristics and requirements that are needed by the study. Also, in non-probability sampling, the researcher has full control as to who will become part of the research sample.